what up? This is Rama Screen, and it's time for another celeb interview. And in the anticipation of Echo Boomers, which arrives in theaters and on demand and digital November 13th, I'm here talking with one of the stars of this new movie, Haley Law. How are you, Haley? I'm good. How are you doing? <laughs> good, good, good. Oh, man. Before I go any further, I just want to start by saying that I was a huge fan of Altered Carbon. I'm so Yay! sad that it's not continuing, though. But I loved yeah. your character, Lizzie. It's Thank such you. a brilliant show. And, and your character... It's so good. Indeed, indeed. And your character in this Echo Boomers is also a strong female lead role, Ali, in the middle of a male dominant storyline. How did you get on board oh, Echo yeah. Boomers? And what attracted you to the project? Um, definitely being the only female person of color in the film, I was like, I gotta, I want to be, I want, I want to be the only female person of color in this movie. Um, I thought the storyline was interesting and crazy. And of course, when I saw that Michael Shannon was involved, I right away was like, yeah, I want to do this for sure. And then I read it, taped for it. And then I FaceTimed the director and he gave me some notes on my tape and then I retaped. And then I was driving to Comic-Con and I was like halfway to San Diego and then I got the call that I got it. Awesome. Oh, I love San Diego Comic-Con too. <laughs> me too. Me too. I was so sad. At, I mean, I mean, I it can't happen this year, but it was sad. Talk to me more about Ali though. Um, how would you describe her? What... Why do you think she sticks around in that testosterone field environment? And do you share some things in common with Ali? Yeah, I mean, why she sticks around, I think, personally, I think she's young and doesn't realize she at the, at the time that she's in kind of an abusive relationship. And she is, you know, she holds her own and she's badass, but also um, she doesn't need to take shit like that. And I think she figures that out throughout the movie, which is great. But um, yeah, she's a badass and, you know, it, it kind of takes some strong will to be in a group like that for so long and to be with someone like Ellis. Uh, I think it kind of <laughs> takes some strong will. <laughs> and, and do you share some things in common with Ali? Uh, I, I like your hair in this movie. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I other than that being my hair, uh, yeah, I don't know. That's a good question. I don't think I share much in common with Allie. I think uh, partially that she is kind of a hard ass. I, I think I think I take less shit than she does. Um, but yeah, I think I think we both are very. Um, independent i think she's very independent i gotta ask um those big mansions and big houses that you guys happily destroy mm -hmm. it looks so fun by the way i wish i could do the same um it but was. but how did you guys pull it off i mean i mean were there actually big houses and big mansion where the owners allow you guys to come in and destroy their furnitures and paintings and such i'm curious there were actual insane mansions i think they took all their stuff out and put the staged stuff in but oh. um they definitely didn't want the owners to see what we were doing in there for sure <laughs> i can't imagine coming back and seeing i remember there was one girl there who was like the daughter of the owners or something and she was like this is all gonna be like cleaned up before they get back right and they were like oh yeah for sure because it would have been it was a mess but um yeah it was fun and the houses were, I've never seen houses like this before. The ones that we were in. Insane, insane houses. Does it take like hours or forever takes to get the, those scenes right? We only had one take really because we couldn't reset any of the stuff that we broke. So they were like, you got, this is it. You got one, one try. You got to break this armoire or this china cabinet and you cannot, we can't go back and do it. So you better give it everything you got. <laughs> but it was great. And the DP was so amazing and he just caught everything so good. And, but, but that was all you, right? Did you wear any protective gear or maybe eye no. shields to, to, no, no not at all? No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was a little bit worried about that, to be honest. Um, Cause the scene where I'm breaking that cabinet, I'm yeah. not wearing anything. I think I have gloves on, but like, no. But the glass, the first layer of glass was like plexiglass or something. 
So it wasn't too bad, but it's still, you know, but the stuff inside was real glass. So I was just like, uh, I'm going to try not to get too crazy because I don't want to lose an eyeball. <laughs> That's yeah. awesome. Uh, you work with a lot of uh, fantastic actors over the years. And um, you mentioned Michael Shannon, mm -hmm. one of my favorites. I've met him Same. in person. I idolize him. What's it like in his presence working with him? He just sets the bar so high and he's so cool and so good at what he does and so professional that I think he makes everyone around him better or want to be better. Because I mean, the, the cast is quite young and it's a bunch of boys. So it was like, you know, there's sometimes it was a little crazy and rowdy, but as soon as Michael was there, it was very professional. <laughs> and it was cool. Quickly, how did you create the dynamic between you and Arnold Schwarzenegger's son, Patrick? Patrick, oh yeah. Uh, Patrick is great. We we met a couple times before we started shooting. We went for coffee and stuff in uh, in Salt Lake City, and it was just easy. He's just super cool and chill, and it was fun. He doesn't get bored being asked about his father. <laughs> oh my god, he must be so used to it. I didn't even ask him. I didn't even like. It didn't even click for me. I know, I know that that's his dad, but I was, I never even thought about it. I don't know why. Oh, because you're chill, that's why. <laughs> uh, yeah, I hope so. So uh, let's get to the deeper uh, part of this film, the themes. It's got actual news footage that correctly points out that today's, about today's income inequality and how the rich are getting richer, the poor are, get, mm -hmm. are getting poorer, and the American dream might be a scam. So uh, in your opinion, uh, what do you think about the um, those themes that Seth Savoy brings up or convey through this film in our society do we really get screwed over and and is there a chance for us to turn the tables on the system i definitely think we get screwed over um it's always been easier to do things and to be more successful if you already have money and connections and all that and it's really really hard to be self-made i think today not impossible, but I, I definitely think that, that the themes and um, what he's trying to get across are, I mean, the way that it's done is a very interesting way, but um, it's definitely something that you think about. And I've thought about it for a long time. I wouldn't take it into my own hands like these characters do, but it's definitely an, a, a, a problem that um, is real. And it's hard and a lot of there are so many people that have graduated from university and have degrees and can't get a job and it's crazy to think that some people are spending a hundred thousand dollars on education and can't get a job and it's hard it's hard and i'm i'm from canada but i live in the states and it's even that's hard it's hard to i'm not legally allowed to stay there unless i spend five thousand dollars on a visa and then i can only do certain jobs from there and it's just like oh my god i just want to create a life here and it's so hard thank you for yeah. sharing that yeah and um so lastly um how are you faring in this pandemic times uh project wise uh, what what do you have coming up next um i have a comedy with uh hannah marks she wrote and directed it it's called mark mary and some other people and we finished shooting it in january so it was right before the pandemic but um other than that, lots of music that I'm writing going to put out and hopefully some more film jobs. I'm going to write something. Hopefully uh, I can get that going as well. Awesome. Awesome. Everybody at home, my fans, go check out Echo Boomers in theaters and on demand and digital November 13th. Hey, Leela, thank you for talking to me and congratulations. Thank you. Thank you so much.